Hello everyone. Today we are back with another case of our obstetrics series. Today is a case on degenerative fibroid. Let's learn in detail about this condition through a case. Our patient is a 33-year-old Asian woman who had complaints of worsening abdominal pain for four days. She is 16 weeks pregnant in her third pregnancy. She has a 10-year-old son by normal delivery and had a miscarriage eight years ago. And this is seen in her pregnancy status. Her pregnancy has been uneventful until now with an unremarkable first trimester scan. The pain is in the left lower abdomen and is constant and sharp. She has taken paracetamol with little effect. So the patient is taking paracetamol tablets, but it has very little effect against her pain and she is unable to sleep due to pain. She has had no vaginal bleeding and reports urinary frequency since the beginning of the pregnancy. She is mildly constipated and has no nausea and vomiting. There is no history of trauma and she has not felt the baby moving yet. Upon further examination, the woman is apyrexial, that is she has no fever and her pulse rate is 125 per minute with blood pressure 110 by 68, which is normal. The uterus is palpable just above the umbilicus. So, uh, the uterus is palpable from the 12th week of pregnancy and it is usually palpable in the pubic symphysis. During the 12th week, in approximately 16 weeks, the uterus is palpable in the midpoint, midpoint at pubic symphysis and umbilicus. And at approximately 20 weeks, the uterus is palpable at the level of umbilicus. So, as we had seen earlier, our patient is 16 weeks pregnant, so her uterus should be palpable at the level uh, or at the midpoint of umbilicus and pubic symphysis. But as we can see that her uterus is palpable just above the umbilicus, so it is showing the characteristic of a 20 weeks pregnancy and hence her uterus is larger than it is supposed to be. The size has increased. There is significant tenderness over the left uterine fundal region. But it also feels firm, which means that her uterus is tender. The abdomen is otherwise soft and non-tender. So the remaining abdomen is normal, but her uterus is palpable. It is slightly larger. And it is tender in the left uterine fundal region. Speculum examination shows a normal closed cervix and no blood. So there is no bleeding in this patient. And the fetal heartbeat is heard with handheld fetal Doppler. So the heartbeat is present. That means the fetus is a viable fetus and it is a viable pregnancy. Certain lab tests were performed. Her hemoglobin is low and all the other parameters are normal. So this could be a condition of anemia, which is usually seen in pregnancy in this patient. So the diagnosis was made of fibroid degeneration. And this is seen due to the larger size of uterus than her normal dates and the localized uterine tenderness. These are the important features in making this diagnosis. So firstly, what is a fibroid degeneration? Uh, it is the lack of blood supply to the fibroids that is formed in the uterus, which results in necrosis of the tissue. And the fibroid starts to degenerate, which leads to intense pain, which was the main complaint of our patient. And in uh, non-pregnant patients, there are heavy menstruation or bleeding, intermenstrual bleeding is seen. And in pregnant patients, anemia is seen. 
pain in the abdomen, which was also seen in our patient. She had a left lower abdomen pain. A lower back and enlarged uterus and abdomen, which was also seen in this patient. The need of therapy is to provide symptomatic relief to prevent miscarriage and to manage her anemia. Let's learn in detail about uterine fibroids and degenerative fibroids. So, firstly, what are fibroids? They are estrogen sensitive. And therefore, they grow in pregnancy in response to the hyperestrogenic state. So, fibroids are abnormal mass of cells, as we can see in this picture. These are different types of fibroids. So, these are masses of cells that start to grow in the uterus region or in the abdomen region. And this starts to grow in response to estrogen or the hyperestrogenic state, which is seen in pregnancy. The types of fibroids are pedunculated fibroid. So this has a stalk-like structure which attaches itself to the uterus. There is submucosal fibroid, which is seen in the mucus area, intramural fibroid, sub and subserosal fibroid. So when they when these fibroids outgrow their blood supply, they undergo red degeneration with necrosis within the fibroid, which causes the intense localized pain, which is seen in this patient. Fibroids affect 20 to 30 percent of the female population, commonly developing between 30 and 50 years. They are particularly common in African Caribbean women. Bulk symptoms include pelvic pain or pressure, which was seen in this patient, and this results from the size or position of fibroids or uterine enlargement due to fibroids. During pregnancy, they may cause pain. Recurrent spontaneous abortion, premature contractions, or abnormal fetal presentation, or make cesarean delivery necessary. So, if it causes an obstruction during the delivery, then cesarean or C section becomes necessary at that point. How to manage this condition? Some women manage these conditions at home with simple PCM tablets, or they rest until the pain subsides. Since the fibroid is already degenerating, further therapy is usually not needed and uh, only pain management is required. For that, some people uh, consume OTC medications like paracetamol or other painkillers and they usually opt for bed rest until the pain subsides. But as we can see that in our patient, she also took PCM tablets, but the pain was not subsiding and she was not able to sleep because of the pain. So the paracetamol is not an apt option for our patient. And it is common for the pain to be severe enough for admission to hospital for opiate analgesia. So another option to manage the pain are opiate analgesics. They are safe in pregnancy if it is not used for a prolonged time. Usually, degenerative fibroids, they usually degenerate or disappear within a few days to few weeks. So, for that much duration, opiates could be used as they are safe in pregnancy. But our patient was also mildly constipated and opiates also lead to constipation in some patients. So, if the patient has increased or frequent constipation, then we can opt for laxatives like syrup laxos. Most women remain well systemically. Usually systemic symptoms are not seen in patients, but a full blood count and C-reactive protein should be taken to check hemoglobin and to assess the WBC and inflammatory markers to see if any other comorbidities existing in the patient or not. And in this case, the woman has a mild microcytic anemia of pregnancy and should be given ferrous sulfate since her hemoglobin was low. Fibroids are managed expectantly in pregnancy but may cause malpresentation at term or obstructed labor. If there is a pelvic fibroid, so if there is an obstruction during the labor through which the fetus or the, ba uh, the baby is not unable to come out or if it is hard to have a normal delivery, then a C-section becomes necessary or important in that circumstances. 
Most fibroids shrink during the pure perium, so consideration of surgery should be deferred for at least three months after delivery. Pure perium is the period of time of approximately six weeks after delivery. So after the six weeks of delivery, the hypoestrogenic states uh, start to normalize. The estrogen levels start to fall and becomes normal. So in that case, any remaining fibroids would be degenerated by itself. So surgery should be considered after the puperium and at least a three month period should be taken after delivery. And then if the patient still has intense pain or any sort of bleeding, then the patient can opt for surgery or other therapeutic management. That's it for today's session. Thank you for watching and please share this video. Thank you.